Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Now, this morning, I'd like to capture my thoughts with the title, Fight Runaways. Are you aware that there are some times when uh, there's a fight and uh, everything points that you must have a fight and everything points that, listen, you need to get involved, you need to make a stand, you need to make a defense and you need to do something that will prove uh, others wrong and you're right. I mean, sometimes you need to fight. Uh, don't ask me. Well, there are fights. Sometimes there are some fights you need to run away from, and you have to be a runaway of a fight. I mean, that, that is, don't don't get involved. It's not going to it's, it's not going to benefit you anything. And um, if if you pursue it, you, you're going to be a loser. Now, in First Samuel chapter 17, verse 28, there's a powerful story over there. I mean, First Samuel chapter 17 talks about the story of David when he had come to the battlefield. You remember his his. Um, uh, father had sent uh, David to go and look after the welfare of his elder brothers, and especially Shammah, uh, Eliab, and Abinadab. His father had sent David to go and look after the welfare of his brothers, and he was taking them even gifts. But when he got there, the Bible said then Goliath came to town, and Goliath came uh, as usual with his taunts and, and shouts and uh, uh, recriminatory um, statements that was pulling Israel back to their dark past, the mistakes of the past, like I captured the other time. And then David began to ask questions. And then when David began to ask the questions, the Bible says something very, very powerfully. The Bible says that his brothers, that is the elder brothers, Shammah, Aminadab, and Elab, pounced on him and said, don't we know you? First of all, they said, uh, who have you left the, the, the sheep uh, to? You are supposed to be looking after sheep. You are supposed to be looking after father's sheep. You are supposed to be helping daddy look after his sheep. To whom have you left the, the upkeep of the sheep and you are here in the battle? We know why you are here. Then this is what they say. Say, don't we know you and the naughtiness of your heart? We know. We, we know you. We, we've been with you. We've seen the mistakes of the past. We've been you. You are a kid, brother. We know all the kind of shenanigans you can get up to. We know all the kind of skaldagory you can get yourself in, involved in. And they say, don't we know you? and the naughtiness of your heart. And you have intentionally left the sheep with nobody to come look, uh, check up the battle and be a spectator to the battle. This is what they were saying of him. And the Bible said, you know, the, the way the brothers pounced on him and they were on him left, right, center. I mean, they were really hitting him. They were hitting him with number one, presumption. Number two, accusation. Number three, they were probably visiting his past and bringing certain things that he had done wrong and using his past to hit him with his present, in his present. And the Bible says the way they went at it and the way they were attacking him. Now, David made one, just one statement. He said, what have I done wrong? I just asked a question. And then he added this, is there not a reason? Or in King James English, he said, is there not a cause? There's a reason why I'm asking the question. There's a cause why I'm asking these questions. So he said to his brothers, is there not a cause? Then the Bible says something that is so significant. The Bible said he turned away. He turned away. And that means he refused to engage in an argument with his brothers. It was going to, be, it was going to end up nowhere. These people are presumed. These people have made up their minds about him. Nothing he was going to do was ever going to convince them that he was on a just cause. The Bible says, is there, is there not a cause? There's a stirring within him. There's a stirring within him. God wants, is stirring some things up in him. A gift is being stirred. Something is being stirred up in him. And here he is, people prejudging and presuming or walking in presumptions about him. Walking in assumptions about him. And walking, dictating his, what his motives were. Walking, dictating what his reasons were. And they don't know anything. They don't know that God is stirring something within his heart to go take on Goliath, bell Goliath and bring Goliath to his knees and free the, the people of Israel from fear and from the mistakes of their past. Now David could have got into an argument with them and it would be up and down, up and down. You say, I say, you say, I say, you say, I say, I say, who said, namoke, minke, wanekai, mianamekai, all sorts of things, nokadeng and all those. I mean, it was going to be, it was going to be hell. So a lot of energy and a lot of anointing is going to be wasted in trying to defend the cause that 
It was a kangaroo court. They, those people will never, a kangaroo court never, no matter what he does, no matter what he says, he's never going to be righteous in their eyes. They say, we know you and the naughtiness of your heart. That means we live in your heart. We have seen you. But can you really live in somebody's heart? You can't. So here's the interesting thing. The Bible said, they said, don't we know you and the naughtiness of your heart? And the Bible said, David turned away. Listen, there are some people, it's not worth it arguing. There are some people, it's not worth going up and down and trying to even defend yourself. Go forward and do what God has asked you to do. And what God has asked you to do, if you go forward, it will prove to all of them. The, the, the proof of the pudding is in the, is in the eating. Or the proof of the pie is in the eating. It's not in just talking about it. The proof is in tasting it and then seeing what it, can, it carries. There's no way people will know what God has placed within your heart. And sometimes you waste energy and you waste time and you waste precious anointing trying to defend or trying to argue with people to prove to them what God has placed in your heart. It's not worth it. Sometimes you need to move on. Sometimes you need to just don't mind. It's okay. Let them, let them walk in their presumptions. Let them walk in their accusations. Let them walk in whatever they, they believe. But with time, God will prove that what he has placed within you is the right thing and there'll be no shadow of doubt about it. So you know what? It's a, from that particular type of fight, run away from it. Be a fight, run away. That means escape that fight. Avoid that argument. Leave that course. There's something God wants to do with you. You don't have to waste time and energy getting involved in those kind of fights. They are bad fights. You know one thing? It's a choice of yours to get involved in the argument or to be a fight run away. See you later.